Oh. It's never been about the numbers. It's just yeah. been about the fun. The fun factor can, you know, it can outweigh the number of people yeah. by a lot. It's about the machines, the beans, and the weans. I like it. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable with weans. But <laughs> we can go with it for now. Yeah, yeah. We're workshopping it. We're workshopping it. Fair enough. Uh, Wednesday morning, y'all. Get your hands up. What, 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 what? Uh, what's up, all the beautiful people out there? Oh, it's not recording? Okay. Man, never. Mind. One more time. Just kidding. What's up, everyone? This is Jason out at Mini Biking Ain't Easy in the Go Power Studios. I want to give you guys a quick update before we kick it off. Last episode, you saw Jack Ramsey, and he was supposed to be on a world record binger, kicker, uh, dominator. Unfortunately, Jack Ramsey did get ran over by a truck while on his mini bike. He is all right. His, uh, he probably will not be riding a mini bike for a few months, I'm going to at least say. So that world record um, completer, dominator, whatever word I'm attempt. looking for, attempt, We'll be pushed back. We will keep you guys updated. But uh, send your prayers out to Jack. Hopefully he has a speedy recovery. We miss you, Jack. Uh, get to feeling better. Miss you, bud. Update on Oliver, who went down before Jack. Oliver uh, fell off a mini bike. He broke 12, 12 ribs because he broke some ribs twice. Um, but he, we should be seeing him back here in the shop on Monday for a few hours. It's been like two months since we've seen Oliver. But uh, keep a, a, a thought and a prayer out for Oliver as well. Um, but today, we are here a little bit early for the Mini Biking Ain't Easy Live podcast. It's about 10 a.m. Um, hopefully, everyone's jumping on Facebook. Make sure to write us some messages, some questions, some comments, anything you got. We'll have Bernie go ahead and read them off. Uh, and I'm here with my besties. I got Zane keeping us in the lane. Here. I got Bernie's on the one, twos, and threes. Give me a what up. What up, y'all? So, is there a Bernie cam? Not today. Not oh today. my goodness! Not today. There's, there's, you know, the schedule was all kinds of crazy. So, uh, wah, 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 wah. excuses, excuses, excuses. So. <laughs> and all the way from San Antonio. But even though he just came in from North Carolina, mini mayhem, we have Alex Carey. Yeah! Woo! All right, crowd, let's calm it, calm it down. So, Alex, you just drove in, what, 22 hours straight, 20, 18 hours straight? Something like that. I left at about 6 in the morning from North Carolina, from Cars and Cameras headquarters. Okay, so give us a, so walk us back a week. What were you doing out there? Uh, just last weekend, we were at a Mini Mayhem, uh, the fall 2024 uh, event, three-day event. Uh, get everyone local and then, you know, a lot from afar. Get all the, the mini bikes, go karts, buggies, scooters. I mean, if it's got an engine and rolls, you know, it belongs out there. Okay. Home built machines, store bought, doesn't matter. So, uh, what do you, what, I haven't gotten a chance to go to Mini Mayhem yet. Um, so, what, what can people expect when they go out to this? Uh, a lot of big group activities. We do a lot of guided group rides as well as some, uh, some little in between stuff. We did a scavenger hunt last year. We want to bring that back in the near future. Um, you know, we do a big uh, beanie and weenie cook, which is, uh, I mean, that's, everyone knows about that who's familiar with cars and cameras. Uh, Ike does an amazing beanie weenie cook. and we There's drama just, there, too. Just pots and sure. pots. There there's are, there's drama? We've, we've had hiccups uh, this last time. Not enough weenies? Too many beanies? <laughs> uh, a lot of prep and then not enough prep to follow it. Uh, we had <laughs> prepped everything for this cook and then left it at the shop. Um, what? <laughs> we cut how everything, far, all the onions, how far is all the, the shop? hot dogs. It's about two and a half hours. Okay, you can't just run back no, home. There's no going back. We <laughs> shot straight out to the grocery store, and oh, we bought it all again, and oh, then we prepped no. it at the event. Yeah, Scott said we saved the day, though, Scott, from uh, Jumper Table Dad. Mm -hmm. They had so many people. You'll see the video. So it's going to be intense. Lots of, yeah, community. I mean, group, you know, just everyone, if if they could help, they did. You know, everyone nice. took an opportunity to 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 help out and to make it happen. Um, it initially took us, you know, about an hour or so to get all the food cut up and prepped and ready to go. And then we had the community in there. I mean, we were from the store 
to the fire in like 20 minutes. Whoa. Like, wow. Nicely great. done. Yeah. And I mean, all hands fed, on deck. Fed everybody. Yeah. But everybody you, got to eat. When you yeah. say everybody, how many people? Um, it's hard to count. Uh, Hundreds? Uh, tens? I would say a little over a hundred uh, mm. that we could probably verify. Okay. Um, I mean. And then some shadow people. Some sh- <laughs> some, the voices in my head joined in. <laughs> uh, whoever else had some You're voices. You're not going to make these beanie weenies right? in time. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to count. Uh, we've tried, you know, counting the machines that are out there. We've usually had somewhere between 80 to 100 machines out there. Um, how many, you know, we have a schedule that we print off and we actually hand out and we usually end up handing out like, you know, 150, 200 of those. Nice. It's hard to tell. Um, we thought about doing like a guest book, you know, mm. have to, but trying to get mass participation on, you know, signing your name. Especially so, when everyone's covered in mud. Covered in mud and just want to have fun. Yeah. You know, you don't want to grind the event to a halt. So, you, hey, do some homework real quick for us. Yeah. So maybe um, a di- like a maybe like an after the fact, like a digital one. Like, there, there are some those good, clickers uh, that you can count people in. Just count people. Right, go ahead. Sorry. Just, just walk around clicking people. I, no, I'd say right when they walk, whenever they drive in. I'm thinking for GPS 180, mm-hmm. have Jose with a clicker. But go ahead. I'm That's sorry. actually really smart. I like that. I, I like think it. The only way we can make that work is with the 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 owners of the venue. You know, at the office, they everyone has to check in. We do have to 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 yeah. pay pay our dues. Everyone pays. You know, it's it's ten bucks per person, ten bucks per, per machine, um, and they have a pretty good idea how many people are coming in because they have to walk through that office. Yeah. You know, and then after that, you know, we just kind of see them, you know, in play. But it's not necessarily, yeah, you guys aren't really like, we want to have the biggest mini bike. It's like, no, you guys want to have the best mini bike event it's, on it's the East never, Coast as far yeah, as I know. It's never been about the numbers. It's just yeah. been about the fun. The fun factor can, you know, it can outweigh the number of people yeah. by a lot. It's about the machines, the beans, and the weans. I like it. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm Okay. <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable with weeds. <laughs> we go with it for now. Yeah, yeah. We're workshopping it. We're workshopping it. Fair enough. Yeah. So I'm curious. Is, so was this fall mini mayhem bigger than the spring mayhem? That's or? hard to tell, too. Okay. So we do see a lot of uh, uh, repeat visitors, um, which are great. A lot of loyal fans that come out and friends of the channel that come out. Um, and sometimes we'll see a lot of new people out there and sometimes people that we're used to seeing aren't there. There Mm. were some faces that we missed this time around. Mm. Um, but you know, for the most part, it's, it's stayed pretty consistent in size. Um, and you know, through the Facebook group, we're able to see, you know, a lot of excited new people, you know, you see a lot of posts first time out, you know, what can I expect? Mm. You know, pictures of machines, you know, how will this do out there? And it's cool to interact with those people and get them excited too, because they don't know what they're getting into. Yeah, you know, they, they could have the time of their life where it could be not right for them. You know? mm. um, but I've never heard of anyone having a bad time. You know, I mean, injuries aside, you're going to have those. But yeah. for the most part, it's always great. Yeah. Well, that's I, I um So in research for this, I was watching through a bunch of the videos that people have made of past years and then about this year's mm-hmm. and about the spring one. And I was like, I mean, it just looks like a messy good time, man. Like, but every like so many of them were people just like. Uh, the snorkeled four wheelers, mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's a wild. Those, those mud bogging things. <laughs> that's those things are built for one thing. Yeah, it's just to get from point A to point B, and there's just something a... <laughs> in the middle. And there was tons of water this year because of the hurricanes and everything. Yeah, so the was, water table was super high. Oh, it made wow. things a little rougher too because our guided rides. You know, we go through these trails that we know relatively well for the most part. I've had them pretty memorized. They don't change a whole lot. But we didn't have access to a lot of them this time. Oh, no. Um, either just, you know, the, the obstacles to get to those trails or the trails themselves were just flooded out. Jeez. And, uh, you know, the people out of Busco, they did a really good job doing some trail prep for us. They went through and they graded all the, the main trails. Nice. Um, they prepped the, the drag strip for us. It's just a dirt drag strip. And uh, they got that all smoothed out. For the most part, they were a little rough at the end, but it's a lot better than it usually is you yeah. know then they've got some new owners out there i feel bad i don't remember their names but um so do you guys actually, have a good sorry that, do you guys have a good relationship with the people at busco it sounds like they're the, the they're new excited owners excited yes, to have you yes. okay yeah um uh you know we reached out to them uh, a couple months ago and let them know that we were coming and they remember us from last season you know yeah. in the spring and they had just bought it i think before that that event and gotcha. they still had event schedules from our, our, our last one oh, that's know? awesome and they asked us like what what can we do I'm like well Prep drive surf would be great. Uh, an extra porta potty or two, um, and 
they were posting about us on their page, you know. That's trying, awesome. Trying man. to get people excited that weren't already in our community. Yeah. So I don't know how many of those people translated into Cars and Cameras fans, but there were a lot of people asking, you know, what's going on? What's Mini Mayhem? You know, what's uh, what can we expect there? Yeah. Um, I wish I could have got a hold of those people too and saw like, what do you guys think? You know, yeah. what 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 can we do better by your standards? Um, because they're not part of the community already. Yeah. You know, how do we reach out to those people and create a broader interest? Okay. So now. How did you end up becoming the event coordinator for an event in North Carolina? That's bless you. That's <laughs> tricky. Um, and and then not at the same time. So I started going uh, right after they started kicking it back up after the whole COVID thing. Um, I, I went and attended. Uh, you know, one time. You know, went with my buddy Tyler, and we went down there and hung out. I got Ty Tyler back here in the background. Hi, hey, Tyler. Shout out to Tyler. Shout out to Tyler. Uh, <laughs> He's been a good good co-pilot this for everything. Yeah. Um, but we went out there, and I ended up hanging out with uh, Charles a lot, you know. And uh, we spent a lot of time, you know, hanging out, trail riding, and and exploring the park, and uh, and we clicked. We hung out a lot, um, stayed in touch, and then, uh, you know, the next time we were out there, you know, I got a little more hands on helping them out with stuff, you know, unloading machines, pitching ideas. Uh, John and I started just kind of talking, just bouncing ideas off each other. And, uh, you know, we exchanged information and we just, we stayed in touch. And I said, well, let's do this. The community suggests this. And uh, we kind of worked together on the next couple events. And he finally just said, you know, do it. Like, you know, <laughs> sort of talk to the community, figure it out. And, and uh, he kind of just lets me run with it now. I run everything by him, you know, obviously it's, it's still, it's, it's, I don't want to, I'm not taking it from him. This is a cars and cameras event. Yeah. Um, it's a mini mayhem event. It's a community event. Mm. Um, and I lean very heavily on the community for ideas. Gotcha. Um, it's, a. Uh, it's been fun though. It's, it's been a privilege. Yeah. Well, especially you're planning two of them a year, right? Yeah. Cause it's, you have a spring and a fall. Mm -hmm. Um, so what well, do you, what do you do the rest of the time, man? It's, uh, mostly the community work, stay in touch with the community, keep them, you know, excited about it and, uh, get ideas. Um, scavenger hunt was an idea that I pulled from the community. Oh, nice. Um, and what we ended up doing is, is we had paper bags that we dropped a coin in and hit them around the park and let people find them, bring them back and exchange them for merch, you know, and that was exciting for them. Um, and it was such a widespread idea that when we announced that we did it, we had cheers. Like right That's there at the awesome. morning announcements, we had cheers, um, and all the bags got found. Like people went looking for these. Yeah, so, and, and it was a cool like in between event. You don't have to wait for a group ride. You don't have to wait for a scheduled event. You can just go off and do it. And I think a lot of people like that that creative freedom that they got to take with their time. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. And I already forgot the question. <laughs> We're doing that this year at Art. Yeah, so that's so picking your brain on that. Uh, I took that. I was like, yeah, we should also do a scavenger hunt. So next Friday, if you do come out to the GPS 180, which is November 9th, mm. next Saturday, we show up a day before. I have ten treasure chests, like little treasure chests. I'll put some kind of weight in there so they don't blow off. Mm. But we have 200 acres. I'm going to hide ten of these small treasure chests. So that anyone who finds one, brings it back up, they can get a jersey, merch, whatever that they want for it. So That's cool. That's exciting. And I got yeah. some great spots. They're not going to get found. I promise you guys will not find all 10 of these treasure chests. I he wants them all for himself. <laughs> yeah. He's going to trade it in for his own merch. <laughs> Is this only along the track or are you doing the whole the whole. I mean, they, they will be around iconic landmarks. And I think that's the only thing. Just I don't want people, you know... <laughs> There's a lot of trails that you can't just get to. Mm. Oh, I mean, I can make it super hard, but no, I'm around landmarks. That's your only hint. Okay. No. So, yeah, they're, they're, they will be findable. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Reachable. You won't have to, like, totally trek out into the woods <laughs> to get them. Yeah. That'd be cool. You don't need, like, an excavator or anything. You can find these. Yeah. But <laughs> they won't be just on the track either. Yeah. No. If all of them are found... Then, because Jason just said none of them are going to get found. So if all of them get found, Jason, what happens? I'm going to jump the uh, burning bike oh, on, finally. on an electric bike. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Cool. Okay. 
I, I don't know if that's, that's probably don't, not going to happen. That's not don't hold me to that. that I, can, I can feel your dad coming up here right now. Don't, like, no, don't, don't do you get yeah. <laughs> So I'm curious, when is the uh, spring Mini Mayhem? We don't know. Okay. Um, I can tell you it'll be in the spring. Mm, I like it. So okay. let you know that we will have April 12th and 13th, I believe, we're going to have Pull Start Picnic and GPS 660. So as long as it's not on that weekend, I would love to mark it down and head out there. That's what makes the scheduling a little difficult. We don't want to step on toes. We don't want to double book an event. You know, yeah. like we don't want to be doing it at the same time as Pull Start Picnic because we want to be at that one too. Yeah. Um, and then the same thing with uh, Busco Beach. You know, they are our, our, our venue and they do their own event schedules. So, um, you know, what I do is I wait for their schedules to come out, you know, check with you guys and your schedules. And we try to pick a day or a weekend that just meshes. And then we got to take travel time into account. Um, you know, we cut it close last year for the, the 180. Um, poor Ike who drives that bus. You know, yeah. we got back from Mini Mayhem and the next morning he was on the road Yeah, for, for the 180. Ugh. So we try to avoid that, or I try to avoid that. Um, it's a little easier to plan for the fall one because everyone's schedules have already been out for a while. Yeah. The spring one, I got to kind of wait. Yeah. So... I'm going to need that schedule from you soon. Yeah, April 12th. I think that's our biggest weekend because, well, then two weeks after that, we will have paid swap meet out of Texas Motor Speedway, which is the end of April. So I think if you shot it in March, hey, for sure, let's go. I think it would be the first one we did in March. Oh. And, uh, and don't the, quote yeah. me. I might have to go back and look. But okay. they're usually like second or third week of April. Okay. I don't think we'd have a lot of... You know, kick back from doing it. You know, a little earlier, earlier later in yeah. the season. We just try I, to do it before it gets hot. Yeah, well, because I mean, that's the that's the re one of the reasons why we're moving our events a little bit forward. We moved it mm -hmm. left because it's <laughs> it got too hot that, last that year. Heat. Yeah. So, it's, what was the temperature last year? It was ninety a thousand. It? Oh, yeah, thousand I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. <laughs> so could have been. It was a scorcher. I had heat rashes all over my body. I don't know if you did too. You probably did. No, I no. I'm pretty sure I had heat stroke though. Heck yeah! yeah. <laughs> Good for you, bro. <laughs> no, I remember you. You looked like you had melted. So I think Oliver looked like he had died too. Yeah, poor Ollie. So, man. Yeah. Oh well, we miss him, but we'll see him soon. Yeah, next Monday. Everyone yeah. come into the shop and say hi. Give him a hug, but not too hard. Not yeah. Be careful of the ribs. <laughs> uh, air hugs. Tw yeah. Twelve ribs. Twelve ribs. Twelve ribs. Too many ribs. That's so, I know, yeah. Spare. Luckily, I have this joke. He had spare ribs. I think we need a better lead. <laughs> I know. It, it worked. I've done it three times and you know. it kills every time. Yeah. So now let's go back into your origin story. How are you, like, were you a mini biker, dirt biker, go karter at a young age, or how did you get into just all of it? I was, sports? I was water sports at a young age wow. i was water skiing at about six years old Whoa. Uh, had a boat since i was four um and i did that all the way up until i was maybe 15 or 16 and then kind of just started doing my own things um i didn't get into mini bikes and go-karts and all that until uh i started getting into like metal fabrication mm. um i was building my own truck parts uh you know suspension roll cages bumpers and uh i started taking interest in the, the little things, the mini bikes and go-karts. And I started following uh, Cars and Cameras geez, nine years ago, 10 years ago. They had maybe 1,700 subscribers. <laughs> um, and uh, they sold me on it. Just the idea of like attainable fun, you know, building your own thing at home. And then uh, I didn't know mini bikes were a thing for so long already. Like they've been around a long time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, I think they plugged you guys all the time and at first you know i'm thinking like you know paycheck you know they do it for paycheck and then <laughs> they're doing it for parts <laughs> and then I, but then i started you know shopping to do my own you know i started building parts lists and uh, i found myself on the go power Sports website like at least once a day for these things hubs sprockets chains you know yeah. handlebars um and i would build out you know like a, a shopping list of like a machine that i would build you know like a dream machine and then never do it um, oh, <laughs> and it wasn't until uh, I think it was because it was intimidating to start something from scratch, something I'd never done before. Mm. Um, and then, uh, you know, John and I did that first initial video of the MB200. Yeah, I think it was a dash one with the drum brake at the back um, and uh, realizing there's a good starting point there. You know, like 
you don't have to do everything from you don't scratch. have to do anything. it's a good bike out of the box like yeah. it performs you can keep up with everyone on it it's comfortable um and uh so i started looking into that a little bit more and then maybe a couple years later uh, i found one for sale on facebook marketplace uh kid was selling it he had just got a dirt bike and he wanted to get rid of it. he he think i think he rode it for like 20 hours tops nice. like it was oh man. brand brand new engine yeah. it wasn't even dirty um, the only issue he had was this, the chain kept popping off, and it's just because he had the 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 tensioner bolts. They were just – it was wrong. The, the <laughs> axle was tweaked. tweaked. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was a five-minute fix. Nice. And uh, so I bought it. I drove down. It was in North Carolina. It was about a seven-hour drive. Drove down, pick it up, and uh, uh, I got it home, took some picture of it, jumped into the uh, – as a Trailmaster Facebook group, which I think you guys actually run that one, yeah? Yes. The Trailmaster. The, yeah. Uh, Trailmaster mini bike crew, something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I get in there and and I I you know post it up. I just got this thing, you know, what's the biggest tire I can put on this? And I got a lot of like nineteen by nines, twenty one by nine, something like that. And I really love like the Honda ATCs, mm. those big fat type, those. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I asked like, has anyone done this? It's like, no, it's impossible. Can't be done. Great. Yeah. This is what I wanted Let's to go. hear. Let's go. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. exactly what I When I hear it's impossible, it can't be done, that means I will be the first. Nice. So I, I ripped, you know, this thing, I ripped all the suspension off, the stock swing arm, the forks, everything. I took the frame and I sat it on a cinder block. And then I took a couple ACT tires and I put one each end. I stepped back and I took a picture of it and I sent it to my buddy Travis and I said, this is my bike. I just got to fill in the rest of some scaffolding or something. Like I started doodling, like I'm on my, my phone, like doing sketch up on the pictures. Like yeah. this is you know, MS paint. Like that's, yeah. it, was, it was, it was just <laughs> finger splotches for suspension. And, uh, I just, you know, I just started putting it together, you know, I started from the frame, worked my way out. So is, is this the bike then that you were, this is the, this is that bike. How, so how long has this been a work? Is it a work in progress or is this it's, the final form? It's never done. Okay. It's not, I'm probably, constantly evolving. I don't know there's there's I mean a front brake would be nice um <laughs> maybe a little more engine work yeah um this is a, a predator ghost engine I just wanted something you know a quick swap in I had a a stage one tilton that I got from from go power sports and uh I ended up blowing it up I don't know if it was like lack of maintenance on my part or <laughs> I wasn't nice to it yeah uh, I was very rough on that thing and uh actually you know my buddy Tyler here he he took it apart and rebuilt it for me and i already had this one on so i haven't put on it it might still you know be oh yeah it's a feasible option um but this was like a week before mini mayhem it's like i gotta put something on it okay so i went and picked up a ghost a little more expensive than i would have liked for a 212 but it's working yeah so the tilts will probably you know find its home again on it gotcha man so I mean, that's, the thing. This, that's a good segue into, do you want to walk us through, like, what is going on with this? Yeah, did you make your own triples then to go that wide? Started. As a... Started uh, with the stock one. Uh, I ended up cutting the triples at the bottom and okay. sleeving them, bringing them out. And okay. then I cut the clamps off and basically copied the originals, but with some bigger tube. Okay. That top plate is a 3 steel plate that you guys make for the MB200s. Mm -hmm. um, started with that because the math was kind of already there. And I just widened it. Okay. Huh. So I just I widened it about four inches at the top. Expand, enhance. Well, yeah, pretty much. Widen by cutting a brand new top plate out, or I used the top plate I had, and just lopped off the ears on it, and just added okay. a couple sections. You know, steel, some three sixteen steel that I had laying around. Okay. Nice. Um, stuck it in there, ground it all smooth, so it looks like it's all one piece. Mm. You know, and uh, and you know, it's it worked, but that's still you know OG Go yeah. Power Sports stuff on there. Um, a lot of stuff on there is still like go power sport stuff, to be honest with you. The hubs are go kart hubs. The wheels are go kart wheels. Uh, sprocket, live axle kit at the back. It's nice. A, a go kart live axle kit that I you know, <laughs> re rearranged a little bit. Yeah, oh, that's smart. Um, hangers I actually have turned down just so I can drop the axle. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Uh, I've had issues getting that axle in and out. Uh, okay. Probably from the top or from the back might have been better, but. It looks good. It, yeah. So. What What about that suspension system on the back there? Um, swing arm is all custom. Uh, the shock mounts I had to move out to clear the tire. Yeah. And then uh, jack shafts galore back here. I've got two chains, two tensioners, two jack shafts. Check it out. Um, like when after this, like I want to. I want to go check it out. Yeah. Cool. This yeah. thing is 
it's it's had its share of failures. It's probably like the third iteration of that drive line. Okay, um, but it's been very reliable since. It's you know? super. No, I mean this thing is so cool, man, and it's like robust. You yeah, know, it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm not nice to it. Yeah, you know, I mentioned that before. I'm not nice to this thing. <laughs> I'm looking at yeah, like you can see all the dirt on it and stuff, but it looks. I mean, it looks like it belongs in the mud, man. Yeah, yeah, it does. I just you know, uh, and you have four headlights on the top there. I do. Yeah, um, the bottom two are like my high beam. I've got them aimed up a little bit more, and uh, I've got okay. a, a high beam low beam switch on there from it, uh, an ATV. So I got two like regular driving lights and then two aimed up a little more, so this I can is, try yeah. to avoid blinding people on the trail. Try. That's super cool, man. Um, I wonder, is that a is that an electrical port there? It is. So I had a regular like uh, power sports battery on there for the lights. Yeah. The problem was the weight. You know, all the jumping around stuff. It started. I kept breaking the mount, oh. and I had it mounted to the top of the engine. So the vibration, the weight, Which just is, is boom. It was tearing it up. So I ended up going to uh, some drill batteries. So Milwaukee oh. M12. Uh, inside this box right here, there's three of them oh, wired up in parallel. Okay. Um, but the port was so I could charge the battery. It's just gotcha. a regular battery trying to just plug it in the garage. Yeah. Is it, no, because I was just, this thing, it's very, like, this thing looks super cool, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. You got the thumb throttle going on. There's as a well. lot of trial and error happening here. I see. Yeah. Um, you guys are seeing more of the success side. Um, I don't know how many chains I've thrown. <laughs> um, I don't know how many times this intake has sucked up water. I was um, say, you, did you make that on your your own intake there for it to curve up and sit yeah, on top? Yeah. So it's a uh, as some tubing on Amazon or something like that, pre bent, just cut and welded into the shape that I needed. Put the flanges on. Wow. Um, I kept kicking the air filter off. Yeah. Oh. So just the way that I ride it, I don't know. Maybe I'm a clumsy rider, but I kept kicking the air filter off, and uh, I wanted to move it up. Yeah. So the thing is, I moved it up behind the tire, and then the tire's slinging mud on it. Yeah. And I sucked water straight into it. So I 3D printed an airbox to go over the filter. Yeah. So it the uh, the filter slides into the airbox and screws in, and then that goes on as one complete unit. That's really cool, man. So did you, did you for the 3D print, did you design the STL for it? Or did yes. you? Wow. Dang, man. Um, more trial and error. That was, that was a learning experience. That's probably the fourth one I made. Oh, okay. You know, fourth design. And, and probably like the third print of that design to get this thing right. And I could probably do better still now. Um, but yeah, 3D modeling is not my, you know, it's not not my your, forte. Not your jam. No, no it's not. It takes it's, a while to get into it. Uh, yeah. It, it does. It's a lot of work. Um, and it's a lot of... Uh, the thing with 3D printers is you can't print over air. You know, you can bridge, but only so far. Yeah. So coming up with a design that prints smooth, prints strong, because your weakness is those layers yeah. in between those layers... I mean, um, and even with supports, you can yeah. still end up with issues. With weaknesses yeah. here and there, too, yeah. So that one, it's not a load-bearing part. Um, it only has to hold its own weight, and that's actually a, a carbon fiber-enforced uh, filament. Nice. No, okay, no, yeah. Nice. I was going to ask what you were using for it, yeah. Cause like... That one is a PETG. Oh, nice. Carbon fiber. Same thing that, uh, like, plastic water bottles are made out of. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, you know, it's food safe if you care about that. Um, it doesn't. Are you eating sun. off of it? <laughs> uh, sometimes, yeah. You know, pull it, turn it up, bowl of soup. You know, it depends on how well you know the trail riding's going. You know, gotcha. If yeah. the bike's down, my bowl is not. I was gonna say. I was gonna say when you're going, if you're going through the mud and stuff, maybe you find like some crawfish. I don't know. Like, <laughs> beanie weenies. Maybe. Yeah. Beanie weenies. Yeah, yeah, just beanie weenies on the side of the trail. <laughs> so I uh, see. So you also had the foot peg relocator on there. Yes, that's you guys too, and that's a game changer. That's a big deal for me. Yeah. And I didn't think it would be. Uh, I thought just moving the because I use the front pegs. Um, I like to sit down. I like to have my knees bent. You know, very mini bike style. Yeah. And the way I ride it just wasn't for that. To actually get up off the seat to go over bumps stuff like that, I'm like hanging on to the handlebars like a yeah. monkey bar, and uh, you know, moving those pegs back definitely it's, helps out. It's more of a a, a racing stance, but it, it is more comfortable too. And you can still sit on it and, yeah. and have your legs at a comfortable position. Yeah. Um, you know, that I would recommend that to anybody, you know, whether you're racing or just cruising. Yeah. Like, that was a big deal. Gotcha. Um, I didn't see the other side, but uh, is it just a normal torque converter that you got on there? Or? Uh, juggernaut. Okay. Yeah, Juggernaut on there. And then uh, it's a 788 belt on it. And then I believe the driven pulley is the factory. Okay. Uh, uh, MV200. Looks good. Where'd you get your gas tank? Internet. Okay, and <laughs> did you? It's a Amazon. It's a cafe racer tank that I found on Amazon for like sixty bucks. And then you must have painted it to match your side 
panel as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the side panels, and I had a front fender as well, uh, but all the color stuff is actually a, uh, it's an automotive paint. It's uh, Chrysler's Inferno Red. Oh, I thought it was a Dr. Pepper Red. It, Dr. It's, Pepper. It's pretty, it's pretty close. Dr. Pepper Burgundy. Um, this guy's a little faded. It's been in the cooler for a minute. <laughs> um, that was coincidence. No, I, okay. I, I went with the, I went with that color because it's actually it's a purple base with the orange flake, so it looks really good in the sun. Okay. Um, when it gets dirty, it still has a, a unique color to it. Yeah, and I want something I could it. go back and touch up. Yeah. you know, if it's an automotive color that I have a paint code for, I can you know tear it up and still go back with the touch up. And there's some touch up pen stuff on there too. Hmm. If you look at the other side, I've got some marks. Oh, uh, okay. Um, no, it looks great though. I mean, I love that color, man. Where's so. the front fender that you were talking about? You said it must have broken off, or it doesn't fit anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so I got you. The most recent uh, uh, iteration of suspension was these pit bike shocks. Mm -hmm. um, I was originally using the stock MB two hundred shocks, but you only get about two inches of travel out of them. Yeah. Um, these have about six and a half, seven, and mm. uh, the tire actually comes up so close to that tree, there was mm. no way to get a fender in there. Okay. It was it was hitting it, and it was only about an inch lower. Wow. So, um, you know, it's just gonna get muddier quicker. Have you ever done like a top speed run on this? A few. It's not impressive now because I've got it geared way down. I'd imagine it'd be tough with um, those big tires just yeah, to make sure I you're was not burning, burning belts. belts. Yeah. yeah. When I had it geared at one point to do about 55 miles an hour and it would do it. That was with the Tilton on there. Hmm. Um, with this ghost engine and then geared a little lower, it's a 72 inch sprocket. Or okay. Tooth sprocket um, nice. on okay. the back. It does about 35. Okay. It gets there quick though. Did it'll, you? It'll stay. It'll do a wheelie. It'll stand up on its yeah. own. Yeah. Did you run this in the GPS 180 last year, or at least test it I didn't on the race track? It, but I did test it on the track. Yeah, I mean, I'd imagine you would not have any issues with the hill or any of those rocks because you have so much ground clearance. Yeah, it was it was smooth. It would, was uh, it was a luxury ride. Would you, if you do come back to the GPS 180, would this be the one that you race on? I don't know if it'd be quick enough. Okay. Uh, you got some long straights out there. Yeah. Uh, like 55, 60 mile an hour straights out there. Yeah. The hills and, and, and jumps would be fine, mm -hmm. but I think I would lose it in the straights. Do we ha I, do we also have a wheel size minimum or maximum? I think. 10 inch wheel. So he's under that. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. I, I didn't know if it was 19 inch for the. Uh, tires can be whatever, just as oh. long as the wheel is under 10 inch. Okay. Oh. I think these are eight. Yeah. You got eight. Oh, you asked me that at Busco too. So. So yeah, anyone wondering, as long as your rim or your wheel is 10 inches and under, bring it on out. Now, I will say the front tire is a downfall for cornering. It okay. doesn't bite at yeah. all. It wants to slide. <laughs> it's great in the sand, it's great in the mud, but if you try to lean into a corner, it wants to keep going. Mm. Oh, okay. So it's it's not a race bike. It's uh, it's by any means. It's a uh, terrain eater. It's, yeah, exactly. It's a go anywhere. It's, it's an all terrain bike, ATC. It reminds me of Junior's Rokon. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. those yeah. huge tires on there. Yeah. Does this float? We should test it. I don't know yet. No, yeah. No, don't. <laughs> no, not, Bring out the not pool. Not with me on. Yeah. <laughs> Bring out the pool. Um, do you think two, two will drive? Yeah. Next? Yeah. That would be pretty sweet. Um, I have been kicking an idea around of doing a hybrid electric. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Motor. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Scuba Man. Who, yes. Who uh, makes his appearance at Mini Mayhem. Uh I always in scuba some, gear, always I, having the filter thing on his I back. I kicked some ideas uh, around with him uh, last year, and uh, you know he helped me out with some information. Oh, dope! I don't think I'm gonna actually do anything, but the ideas, you know, it's floating around. Like, yeah, it's, it's percolating. Around. It is. It okay. Is. Maybe one day I'll, I'll, you know, get the nerve and start cutting it up again. But gotcha. I like how it is now. Yeah. It's hard to get to a point where you're happy with something and then go back and. And be like, up. now yeah. I want to destroy this beautiful mm -hmm. piece of work. I wouldn't do that. I mean, people in our community usually have more than one mini bike. Do you have any other mini bikes? I don't. Okay, well, this is a perfect opportunity to start version two. I, I was going to ask, a bad idea. do yeah. you have any other projects in the works? I have a little buggy uh, made by a company called Joiner. Um, it went out of business in. 11 2011 okay i've got that parked outside we couldn't get it up the stairs ah yeah um but that's been a fun project too for the most part i've kept it stockish it's a it uses 650 cc two-cylinder isuzu engine nice. okay um four-speed manual with reverse and it's it's you know stick on the floor it's like driving a small car 
That's cool. And that's been a fun project too. It's uh, it's turned it's, into a money pit. <laughs> it's turned into money. I had Bernie on it uh, a couple days ago. We did some some riding around at Busco. And oh, okay. It's, it's it's fun. It's been a fun project. A but a photo for everybody. Oh, there we go. How does it? Is it close to a KJ racing rig? No. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, okay. Loaded question. So, uh, Kyle from KJ Racing, he did do a, uh, I would call it like an entry level uh, cross cart where he did use a Predator engine on it. Um, it was a little closer to that um, okay. in terms of maybe speed, mm. and, but as far as like cornering, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I'm touching. Uh, I'm not touching KJ Racing. Oh, okay. Uh, he builds a really good machine. Okay. Um, they're very balanced, and then the parts availability is better for him too. You know, using ATV parts and and engines, and it's a smart design. Um, which I like my buggy, but <laughs> if you were to you know offer a trade, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if, if he's watching, he wants a joiner. <laughs> and wants to get rid of a cross cart. Like, like, those yeah. cross carts are so dope. They're great. So, you, were you saying that you can put a Predator two twelve on one of his? I or think he was using a four twenty. Okay, so something bigger for yeah, sure. Something, something a little bigger. And then uh, uh, I heard talks of him using another engine. I don't want to give away all all, all his secrets, uh, which I don't think I know any secrets. But <laughs> um, I know he was talking about using something else, a little bigger, but still like a CVT. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, setup. So something entry level. This thing uh, that he built, he he just puts it out there and lets people ride it. Yeah. You know, he brings it out and he says, "Get in and break it." Scott you know, said it was a four fifty nine. Four fifty nine. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, the, and 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 you know, he came up to me. I was talking to him about it. He goes, "Drive it." <laughs> like, no, I will probably not bring it back in one piece. He goes, "No, break it. Go out and break it." Wow. And then I did. <laughs> I brought it back with a wheel hanging off. Mission accomplished. Um, it was a, it was actually it was a known failing failure point that he oh, okay. that he and I had already identified and just happened to fail while I was doing it. But uh, you know he uses those opportunities to improve on his design. Yeah. And at the same time, get people excited for it. You know, and these are you know he sells these kits. You know, you can build these things at home using you know an ATV like a donor ATV. That's pretty dumb. Um, yeah, it's it's exciting and they look cool. They're, yeah. You know. They're quick. They're they're very well balanced, and uh, you know the qualities there. Um, cars and cameras built one, and I think they did in like four days with the help of like jumper cable dads. Uh, KJ Racing was out there helping out. Rattlecan Customs helping out. They did a whole like build week. Um, oh, nice! Uh, and it's on I, most of their channels. At least I know it's on Cars and Cameras channel for sure. Um, but you can go watch them build this thing from start to finish. Yeah. And it's a really cool build. Good project bike. Yeah. Or project cart. Project cart. And, you know, the re reliability. You know, yeah. he, he's had it out there this last weekend and still riding it. So Okay. Um, yeah, it's, I'm, a little, I'm a little envious. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'm a little envious. I <laughs> might have to pull the trigger one of these days. Maybe when I get some more garage space. Oh, gotcha. What's taking up space in your garage right now? Um, well, the lack of a garage. That'll do it. Yeah. That will do, do it. it. Yeah. So, no, full disclosure, um, I actually moved back to Texas recently. Oh, and okay. I am still in the process of getting a house. Oh, so, gotcha, man. Um, I moved back from Virginia. Oh, not, okay. Not that long ago. Um, so, so Busco was a little bit easier to get to. When I was there, yes. It was yeah. about a three-hour drive. Oh, okay. So for a couple of years, it was, you know, wasn't so bad. Gotcha. Um, this last weekend was the second time I've made that full drive. Yeah. It's a long drive. No, that so is. It's, that's it's, a it's, lot. Without the trailer, it's about 21 hours oh, okay. of drive time. That's not including gas stops, food, sleep. Yeah. Um, with the trailer, I move a little slower, um, and I burn a lot more gas. Uh, so, yeah. But still worth it, though. Talk to us um, about your trailer. I hear that there's issues with it. <laughs> Have you heard about the issues? Yeah. Um, well, they might be self-inflicted issues. Um <laughs> I had some uh, wheels and tires I took off my truck, uh, uh, which is a, a you know Ram Rebel that had some 35-inch mud tires from the factory, and I thought it'd be cool to put those on the trailer, mm. and that's what I did, and I'm um, burning through wheel bearings. Um, ah. I put my third wheel bearing in last night on the drive here at about 1, 2 in the morning, 2 in the morning, Tyler says, um, which, you know, explains the, the stained hands. <laughs> um, so... 
yeah, issues. Uh, it's taken time, Damn. but it looks so cool. But that's all that matters. So. <laughs> and and, I, and then I like a big tire. Yeah. If I Obviously. can fit a bigger, t- yeah. I was gonna say, yeah. fit a big tire. I'm putting a big tire. Um, no, actually, Isaac uh, called me out on a long time ago. He told me I was gonna burn up bearings, and then I did. So how long does it take to repair? I'm getting pretty good at it. This last one was maybe an hour or two. Dang. Three, three hours, two hours, <laughs> two hours. The first one on the way up there, um, you know, uh, in the beginning of the week was a little longer because the inner race of the bearings seized to the spindle. Uh, so we had to cut it off with tools we didn't have. Oh. So we were lucky enough to actually, when uh, when we pulled off, we were right behind a Home Depot. Lucky. So uh, Tyler was kind enough to go buy an angle grinder, and we fired up the generator and cut the bearing off. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, we pulled it. It was smoking. Oh, you know, that, that bearing okay. failed. The truck told me there was some issue with the trailer brakes, and I pull over, and, and there's just smoke billowing from the wheel well. Um, and then I had a line of sheriffs follow me in because they saw the smoke when I was turning the corner, and they happened to be there. And um, <laughs> they were they were nice people. I don't even remember what county it was, but they you know they they came out and checked on me, and it was all good. But you know, I posted a video on the Facebook group on the Mini Mayhem group of okay. the of the smoldering uh, wheel well. Um, still fun though I, like, it, it's, I mean it's an experience it adds some adventure every time like every part of going to busco it, sounds like an adventure it wouldn't be a road trip without something happening yeah you know and, and luckily enough it's something that nobody's getting hurt um and you know i didn't miss the event yeah um frustrating uh i might have thrown a wrench or two i, I might have said some things that i wouldn't want my kids to hear <laughs> but we got it you know yeah and then we got out there, and then, you know, on the way back, it happened again. But we caught it early. Uh, what I had started doing is just every few hours, pull over, jack the trailer, and just check bearings. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, yeah. And the one that I replaced last night, it hadn't actually failed yet. The wheel was loose. I tightened that spindle nut up, thinking maybe it slipped because the pin was was too small. Uh, went down the road a couple hours, it was loose again. Pulled it off, there was a roller missing, and the cage was broken mm-hmm. on that bearing. So, okay. caught it early. I'm probably just going to have to keep doing that until I get home. And oh, then okay. uh, I might take Isaac's advice. Don't tell him he was right, but I'm going to put some regular trailer tires back on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting tired of replacing bearings. Gotcha. Yeah, especially if that's slowing you down two or three hours a pop. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then there's a safety thing. You lose bearings, you can lose a wheel. You know? Yes, that and, too. And, you know, that could be an accident waiting to happen on the road. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, especially at speed. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, either with me or somebody else. You know, yeah. I've seen, I'm, I, you've probably seen that video of a trailer tire a car hitting that thing and just sending it, you know. Mm. Yeah, upside down in the median. Oof. I'm not trying to do that either. I don't want to be a hazard. Yeah, uh, you know, the cool factor goes out the window when you're causing accidents. So yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Regular trailer tires. I'll just have to put bigger wheels on this thing. Gotcha. Make up for it. Now, I, I was curious. Uh, what is the like the coolest thing that's happened at one of these mini mayhem meetups? Like, what's the like? coolest build you've seen and then just like the coolest i mean it sounds pretty cool honestly when you're talking about they're, the beans and weens they're so different ween. everything is so different um we got scuba man out there with an all-electric bike that keeps up like with everybody really this thing he leaves me behind jeez this thing's quick um and it's been reliable and every year he comes back with something different um this year he actually had a mini bike tire on the back so you know his traction was amazing he had yeah. a bigger motor on it Oh, nice. Um, I I can't remember the numbers. He, he was talking numbers, something like 30 foot-pounds or something like that of torque. Like, oh, wow. Intimidating. You know, <laughs> he, he had me ride it, and I think I went half throttle. <laughs> um, because anymore not at speed, and it would still lift the front tire up. It's, oh, man. no, those things are... I know he's... he's I, If he's afraid of it, he hides it well, because he looks like he has full control of this bike all the time. Well, that's why he wears uh, the full scuba mask, because he can't hide, see Hide it. the fear. <laughs> hide the fear. Um... <laughs> That thing's amazing. Um, but, you know, and there's other stuff, too. There's a guy out there with, uh, uh, he built, like, this crazy, like, four-wheel drive dually buggy with a crane on the back. And <laughs> and, and it's got a, a some kind of motorcycle, like, four-cylinder engine on it. And it's, I wish I knew more about it. Um, oh, man. Okay. And I could probably go find some pictures and... and and show you guys just from the main, you know, the the mini mayhem. It won, I think, our uh, our machine show um, mm. last season. Oh. Yeah. Does it yeah. have a purpose? Does it do that to help get people out of pits or out of 
I don't know. It's, or... it's. I think it started out as like a a recovery vehicle concept that he just kept building on. Mm-hmm. I I I remember seeing pictures of this thing as he was putting it together, and I feel bad. I don't remember his name. You're also it's, running on like two hours of sleep, so I am. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I took about an hour, maybe two hour nap at about four in the morning this morning. Yeah, we were talking about that before you walked up. We didn't yeah. let you take a nap during the <laughs> middle of this. I thought about it. This is a. This is no. It's kind of small, come. but those things come off so you can have your legs hang oh, off the edge. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, sorry if I become less interesting as time goes on. <laughs> You're um, no, dude. <laughs> I was. We, we I was understand. Push, I was pushing the limit of boring when i got here um, <laughs> no you but, were great you're doing a great but that, job but that machine is, is so impressive on so many levels uh, and i think he did build it with a uh, recovery in mind in fact during the machine show in mm-hmm. spring i think he had a mini bike like hoisted up on the back of oh, it oh heck yeah oh um, dang and it looked so cool that is like, awesome um and then uh i mean there's the simple you know things like the lawn mowers that people are bringing out yeah this year or this season so many mowers out there like like the, it's it could be a a class of its own out there so now. is lawn so lawnmowers are becoming a big thing like they they've been around for a while obviously as long as grass has been around i guess but oh. uh it's uh but as far as like these off-road builds yeah um like mud tires like sequential transmissions like you know and uh uh you know the ride height uh zach uh you know who's who's out there every season he's got the one that's just jacked way up with the diesel engine um oh, yeah, it's cool i got to ride that yeah so oh nice how was that it was slow but it was it's, it's got like super cool i don't know if he's changed anything with the transmission but he was using like three transmissions yeah. last season so it was like a 20 something speed i don't i could be making up the numbers but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had he had, he, he's got a stump pulling gear and then he's you know he's got one that he can get up and go oh like, okay okay he has a snowmobile thing. too. Yeah, he's got the snowmobile with the wheels in the front. It's a, a blue snowmobile, air cooled, and and that thing rips too. Mm-hmm. And it looks comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's like so, a Cadillac, it's so smooth with no looking. power steering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was featured on uh, Cars and Cameras too. They did some work on that, uh, and then I crashed it, um, and then nice. fixed it. Oh, that's nice. So, um, is I, it the one where Ike fell off the mm-hmm. side in the middle of the road and it went tumbling or whatever? Was that? I don't. No, Which I, time? I, yeah, I does yeah, a lot of tumbling. I forgot. Like, yeah, yeah, never I, mind. He tumbles yeah. a lot. That's a yeah. career for him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, no, uh, where he ended up crashing, oh, there's nice. a, a part of the track. They've got like a culvert with a, a concrete tube that runs through it. Mm. And he cut that corner a little hard and the tire hit that concrete pipe. Oh, oh um, no. I don't, I don't think he tumbled. I think he actually landed on his feet, if I remember right. Nice. I think he came off and landed. And just one. kept running. Something like that, yeah. I, up like, I wasn't stop there. Stop me now. I wasn't there Everybody's to see Everybody's saying that. he hit the ditch drain. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Landed on his feet, said, are you not entertained? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, got it fixed up and, 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 you know, it does great. I mean, Zach is still riding it. So. So. Um, he rode, he was at the 660, mm-hmm. and then he's doing the 180 this year. Nice. So he'll be nice. Okay, yeah. cool. We can, we'll, we'll ask him about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, Zach or Ike? I mean, I figured Ike is going to be here. Okay, Zach, Zach too. Yeah, okay, Zach, Zach will be Both. out here. Yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah, so that'd be cool too. And Zach, Zach's a good rider. Yeah. You know, he was turning out practice laps at the the Cars and Cramas track uh, a couple days ago. Ooh, okay. He's nice. a good rider. Y'all look out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so curious, is there something? So what do you do outside of mini bikes and go karts? Um, I am a uh, dad. First of all, nice. uh, two kids. Uh, uh, Mazel tov. That's well, thanks. Um, that is primary focus most of the time outside of the the hobbies, um, and then you know I do uh, retail work. So okay. I, 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 an AutoZone store manager. Okay. Oh, it's okay. Out, it's out there. Secrets out. Um, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's it's a living. So, yeah. um And it, it it pays the bills. So you know, and I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy it, I think it's the people. I, mean, I, like, I like talking to people. That's a great job for what you're doing, so that you can find. Awesome car parts that can work on uh, on your mini bikes and whatnot. I've got some car parts on on some projects. Uh, oh, yeah. The joiner has got a, a Ford Fiesta tie rod on it now. Nice. After I snapped one, I think it was ready to go though. I snapped it doing an alignment, hmm. <laughs> so it's a little scary because I was out jumping this thing not that long ago, um, and then I snapped it with a wrench that long. Okay. Um, 
That's a scary thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tie rod on the front wheel. Um, and I'm jumping this thing like nose diving into dunes. Um, oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's no, it's not bad. Um, and it's, I think it's just, it's the people I yeah. like, I like retail cause I like talking to people. I like, you know, mini mayhem cause I like talking to people. I am interested genuinely in what other people are doing, you know, their projects, whether it be cars, mini bikes, go karts, stuff like that. Um, if someone wants to start talking to me about an airplane they're building, I would listen because that's cool too. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know a lot about them. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fun for me. So have you always been like mechanically inclined? It seems like it's like a focus for you. I did my first oil change at seven years old. Is that because dad was saying, Hey, you need to go change this oil. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He, he pushed me into, I mean, I was mowing grass, uh, you know, at a, you know, about seven, eight years old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, working on my own bike as a kid. Um, I liked doing it. You know, I was that kid who was taking apart, you know, stuff and then not putting it back together. Right. Um, <laughs> sorry, dad. trial and error. <laughs> sorry, yeah. dad. Um, but I like to figure out how things work. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, me thinking I'm better than the engineer. I like to see if I can make it work better. Um, and a lot of times I can't, but I learned why things are done the way they're done, you yeah. know? Um, and same thing with many bikes, you know, I've, I've messed so many things up on this and then come back with something a little better, you know? And sometimes I go back to what it was hmm. and, and I'm not ashamed of that either. Yeah. Was your dad mechanical? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He did all his own maintenance, uh, you know, on the boat, on his truck. Um, he had a motorcycle. Um, and I learned a lot from watching and doing, holding the flashlight, um, which is now, it's a, it's a staple of my persona, to, you know. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> never stop holding the flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I liked doing it. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to explain why I find mechanical stuff so appealing, but seeing the way things move together and the way they work together. Um, you know, I'm, I was always that kid that could stand like at the fence of a construction site and watch an excavator go for an hour and a half. Like, and, and that would be all I'm doing is just watching this thing move. Yeah. You know? Um, and, and then motorsports on TV and stuff like that. Like, it's interesting to me. Yeah. You know? And then stuff like this is, is I, I consider it entry level into that stuff is, is where I'm at. But, you know, being able to, you know, engineer, you know, that kind of stuff, um, uh, one of the things I've been kicking around with this thing is like a cantilever suspension system on the rear just to do it because oh. I haven't seen it done, you know, put the shock in a weird spot huh. and, and then, you know, or hide it entirely. Yeah. Just something different. Um, but something to figure out, you know, a puzzle with no right or wrong answers. Do you pass these skills on, along to your kids? My son's favorite thing in the world is Legos. Okay. So I like to think yes. Thank you. Um, and then uh, I started getting them into, uh, I don't know if you remember, Connects. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are the best because you can actually build moving things, you know, yeah. mechanical designs that do work. And uh, he's, uh, this kid has gotten so good at these. He doesn't open the instruction booklet anymore. He'll come out with something that he's built that looks exactly like he followed the directions. I said, you did that by yourself? Said, yeah, I looked at the picture on the front. And know, I had like, all these spare parts I didn't need. <laughs> but, but he does them right. I've gone yeah. back and looked. And he does them based on, like, he'll have the instruction booklet. And there'll be, like, that picture in the corner of, you can build this. And he's over here just, nice. just you know, he, he builds it based on, without even opening the book. He's just going by the picture. Nice. You know, and he does them right. Like, I don't That's sit awesome. there and hold his hand building his models anymore. He's got it figured out. He can, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of him. That's awesome, man. So, um, he Are wants you? he wants me to build him a, a go kart. He asks me every single time I have that joiner out. Oh, know, really, Dad? Can you build me a go kart, but my size? Yeah, that sounds like an awesome project, though, for like a dad's son thing to work it wouldn't on. Wouldn't be bad. I, I might have this kid welding before he's ten. Heck yeah. <laughs> Get him a um, leg up, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. Get him a bolt go kart kit. Yeah. Come on, yeah, guys. They were just looking at that downstairs. Yeah, I want to yeah. bring one to Busco. Yeah, you just bolted together. That's a cool kit. I like that kit. Yeah. Uh, I remember, uh, uh, I think it was Build Break, Build Break Repeat. Yeah. Yeah. That, that helped out with that or designed it. I don't know how, how much of. They designed it. That was, that's all that. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. the Bondi Brothers. 
The Bondi boys. Yeah, the Bondi boys. That's, that's good work. I couldn't imagine trying to drill all those holes by hand. Oh, <laughs> they were out here uh, not that long ago. Uh, I think for Pate, yeah. I think is when I met them. And we were talking about that. Like the first iteration, they were hand drilling holes. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And that, I don't like drilling one hole. <laughs> if I can get away with not drilling something, I'm not drilling it. Like, that was just the prototype. We definitely sped up the process ever yeah. since. Yeah, it's yeah. it's cool, and I know uh, you know there's one out cars and cameras, and they've run that thing around the track, and it's as far as I could tell, it's holding up well. And yeah, they put a really big engine on it. Really yeah, they had engine. like some turbo diesel on there mm -hmm. for a little while. Yeah, and that crazy paint job they done is pretty cool too. Yeah, it shows off all the pieces. It's like Joker ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's cool to see you know all those pieces. You know, it's they're not blurred together. Yeah. Um, obviously uh but i don't it's that's a cool kit i yeah. like that kit a lot um but that would be something you know and i had my kids out here uh i think during pate was when i had them out here last and you know i think one of them was satellite i think we had my daughter sitting on it mm -hmm. for, for sizing nice um and she loved it uh i think my son's a little more interested you know she's she's in the moment and then once it's out of sight she's done with it but he'll come back like when are we gonna go back you know, yeah. When are we gonna ride this? I mean, because it, it does it to me. It reminds me. You're talking about like Connects. I, I remember those mm. like the old Technic kits, like mm. Lego Technic, and like so. Those are intricate too. Yeah, man. And they're still around. I think. Well, Connects are still around too. They're just a little harder to find. So yeah. I've been getting them online. Um, but Technic, yeah, it's, those are cool too. Um, I think I've done a couple of kits myself. I still play with Legos. I'm not ashamed. The Speed oh. Champion series. That's yeah. <laughs> You're talking a top nerd, right? Yeah, here. dude. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. Don't worry. Like that's uh, my daughter and I. That's like our mm -hmm. thing that we do when we're just killing time. Is like we just pull the Legos out and just yep. build random stuff. Yeah, that's we it. got ten boxes of Legos. Like the big Lego mm -hmm. that opens up to all to the have other smaller Legos. Legos. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got like ten. It's just recursive Legos just going down. <laughs> that's it. Like yeah. the Russian dolls. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, no, I, I still, I. My quiet time. I'll I'll sit. I'll I'll turn on YouTube and and sit there and build a kit like small. Like There's something cathartic about it. I think it's just uh, it's relaxing and it's, you're getting to work with your hands. And it's therapeutic. Yeah, and it and it kind of falls right in line with my mechanical interest. I like seeing how you know someone designed that. Yeah. Someone figured out how those pieces are going to work together to look like what it's going to look like or function how it's going to function. Yeah. And I really like that. As you're building a set, you're kind of in the mind of that designer you know, figuring it out, kind of a step behind them kind of thing. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot to be learned from from that. And, you know, I would love to, like, meet a, a master builder, I think they're called. Yeah. And kind of see what that thought process is. Well, you see, the, yeah, the way that they will, uh, they'll cannibalize or, or repurpose parts from mm -hmm. certain kits or they'll have, like, these special bits and it's like, oh, actually, I could use this to make this happen. Yeah. Um, like, uh, my wife and daughter built the... Uh, bonsai tree one mm -hmm. and it's like so you can either have it be you know very verdant and green or you can have it with like the cherry blossoms on it but the cherry blossom one is a bunch of these like pink frogs oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it's like oh wow that's actually a really cool repurpose of that and you don't notice until you're right up close what it's, it is it's funny you mentioned the frog because i did a uh, uh it was a jurassic park one it had the jeep yeah and then it had the sign that flipped around and all that and it has a little uh uh you know, the shaving cream can, like the <laughs> iconic shaving cream. Yeah. And uh, where you put it, you, it has a little bit of shaving cream that, that you put next to it. And it's actually, it's, it's the frog piece, but it's just all white. Oh, yeah. But it looks like a little blob of shaving cream. That's you know? smart, man. It's it's so cool how they do stuff like that. Yeah, I'm I, I'm always in awe. And uh, well, let's talk a bit offline about this. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're, we're going to circle back. Yeah, yeah we can let's circle back on this yeah, one. Well, I want to stay on it. So do you watch uh, Netflix, <laughs> like the Lego Master Makers, whatever it's called? The, the oh, what is it called? Lego Master. The, yeah, yeah that's you watch that? Yeah, yeah that's yes, pretty amazing. Yeah, I haven't watched that. That's, what? Is it good? You yeah, then they put them like through different scenarios. Yeah. One, the last one I saw was like, make a boat and have it float. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. They're doing some, they're building like RC cars that they got to race. Yeah. Uh, they're doing like uh, roller coaster designs. Oh, that's so cool. Um, and then you'll you'll kind of see where people try to reinvent the wheel, and you know they already have roller coaster kits and tracks and all that stuff. And you know the contestants are trying to like do their own version, you know, redesign the way the roller coasters work. And you can kind of see why they were the way they were in the first yeah. place. Um, and uh, they have a couple of the master builders like on there as hosts. Um, uh, one of them did the roller coaster design himself. Yeah. And uh, so obviously that that 
contest was like kind of close to him. And you can kind of tell the way they talk about yeah. certain projects. Like, okay, you thought this through because he's explaining like this is why it is the way it is. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's cool on, you know, uh, creativity side also, like seeing how people can visualize something and then turn it into uh, what they call sculptures, Lego sculptures. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not so much mechanical, but it is art. Yeah. You know, and that's cool too. Well, yeah, that's actually um, uh, about a month and a half ago mm -hmm. over at the Keller Public Library. They had, um, I guess, like the North Texas Master Builders Group came out. Mm -hmm. And so they had all brought all these giant things. And some of them were like wildly crazy cool kits that yeah. they had repurposed from other things. So like one guy has a project he's been working on for something like five years. Mm -hmm. And it's this castle and he said he wanted it to be something that people could play with. So he actually made it so every, like, the walls of the castle open up. So you can literally open them like a cabinet and move the stuff around inside. He's like, I wanted it to be that when the kids come in, they this is the thing they can touch. Okay. But he said he had to, like, he was just buying pieces in bulk off the internet so he could build this thing. It was probably, it was about as big, dub, double the size of that couch. It's big. It's big. And it was about, you know, four feet high or something. Yeah. And I just, I love seeing people do so. Like, there's a guy who just like, he would take random pieces and make Titanfall mechs. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's like super dope watching people. And you get to see the creativity like you're mm -hmm. talking about. You see how people's minds are working around problems. Which really, I guess, is kind of what's going on with this mini bike too. It, it is. But like, you can ride it. Most, but you can actually ride this. Ride yeah. But I've seen like big Legos to put together with batteries that people are riding like mini bike Legos. I saw one on, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Adam Savage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he had featured one on his channel where someone put The guy who 3D printed all the Lego pieces yeah, and, 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 and built it. It's all electric or something like that. Yeah, I, sh I was showing it to them. Dope. I was like, man, I kind of, I got a Creality at home and I was like, man, I kind of want to see if I could do this. Like, you should definitely <laughs> do that. What size is that print bed? I don't know off the top of my head. It's it's large. It's large enough to do helmets. Like so, I can do a helmet oh, in wow. full. Yeah. I don't know some of those bricks. I'd probably have to do them laid flat and then going up. And so I don't know what that does to the structural integrity of it. Mm -hmm. But um, so mine, I got a, a flash forge, and it's a two twenty by two twenty by two twenty. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. It's enough space. It's it did that. Yeah. No, that's good. No, Flash Forge is really good. I like their stuff. It's a great out of the box printer. It was like seven hundred bucks for the M five Pro. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it'll print anything. It's in a full enclosed, so you can do ABS and stuff like that too. Yeah, um, which is a big deal in three D printing world. ABS is hard to work with. Oh yeah, I know. I mean, that's... and you have to enclose these things. Well, that's like I I've had to start. Uh, I, I was going to print out because I know they make like a riser for the Creality. I think I have the was it K one, um, and so they ha they make a thing so that you can actually have the glass top sit a little bit up with vents. Okay. Because I have to take it off in my office. It'll get so hot that it actually starts melting the, <laughs> melting the print. It'll melt your print as it's going, yeah. even with the fans that's running. warm. So, yeah. My office is uncomfortably warm most of the time. So. That sounds horrible. It is. It is. I sweat most of the time, though, so, okay, it's so just, I'm used so to it. So, have you printed anything for a bike or a go-kart? Not yet. And that's... I. The, the one thing that I do want to build, which is not for a bike or a go-kart, I want to 3D print bikes and go-kart models. Okay. I really want to design something that people can make their bike and put the components on because a lot of guys will do that with like uh, scale model cars. They'll mm. like car guys will make their model car. I did that a lot with uh, uh, RC cars. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. 10 scale RC crawlers, which are like scale yeah. trucks. But know? yeah, no, that's I, I'd love to talk to you more about this because I really, it's in my heart, I really want to make something that people can design and turn into their own, but that has components that they can shade out so it looks like their bike. Yeah, because I think that that's like the ultimate expression of this. That's is... really cool. Do you have a scanner, three D scanner? Not yet. I was looking at the Rev Point, but I haven't done any shopping on them. I don't know anything about them. I know they yeah. exist. I know that the price point is much higher than I'm willing to put into it right now. We we did a little bit of lidar with our phones. We mm -hmm. were trying to we were trying to do a model of uh, one of our mini bikes. The rascal. Yeah. The, the rascal. rascal. It was yeah, little rascal, and uh, but it was one of those things like I had to I had to cover the whole frame with like blue masking tape. <laughs> oh, so it'd catch it. So it actually it catches shiny, and okay. uh, and we were still running into issues with it just because it is like it's just a smooth surface. So it's there's a, a paint I think you can spray it with. That uh -huh. seems smarter. That sounds like a way better idea <laughs> at like, the end of yeah, the day. It's, it's like a matte, like a, it's a light absorbing paint. I don't oh. know. If, I don't know if it washes off or anything like that. I imagine Dang, it does. That's the ticket right there. There like we the go. Three hours we spent taping there that hours fire. of it. <laughs> <laughs> Rattle can it. 
Yeah, no, that's actually that's a really that's a very good idea. I should do that. So back to the the bike though, like after you got the big tires on and you posted it, did you get a lot of questions? And... A lot of positive feedback. Mm. Okay. Um, and then a lot of questions. A lot of people want to know how it was even possible. Because I know Paul was one of the people that hit you up, right? Paul was like, yeah. Yeah, Paul was asking me about it. Paul was actually the one who initially invited me out here in the first place, like three years ago, um, which is where I met John and Ike for the first time, just downstairs. Shouts um, out to Paul. Shouts, shouts out, out to Paul. Paul. Your beard brother. Yeah. <laughs> you guys do have identical beards now that I see it. Nice. <laughs> He's got Thank a good you. looking beard, so I'll take it as a compliment. Okay. Oh, right yeah, on. man. No, it's uh, all, all love for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, Paul. Paul's a good guy. Um, uh, yeah, he reached out to me and we talked a little bit about it. And actually, he's been my go-to for a long time for the, the engine stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, and then parts stuff, you know, what parts work with what. Because I am not, uh, my experience level with small engines, very minimal. Um, I still, you know, reach out to Ike about, you know, carb, you know, jets. Like yeah. simple stuff. Like my bike is not idling. What do I do? Like, <laughs> um, I'm sure I bother him enough already. But uh He's always been helpful. Um, oh, Ike's a solid dude. But but Paul is, you know, I reach out and he responds immediately. You know, if not within like the next day. I get it, he's busy. And, and yeah. nothing that I'm doing here is life or death. Um, but, you know, it's he's he's been a big help. So, yeah, shout out to Paul. Yeah, no, yeah. Paul's Paul's a really good dude. Yeah. So, we miss you over here, Paul. Come on we out do, sometime. We do, we do. He's uh, he's working another location, I understand. Hey, he's He's got his own compound out a little bit of ways from here. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't blame him for wanting to work in his the comfort of his own shop and everything. Yeah, like, so I don't blame. Him. I don't either. I had the idea of working from your own. Oh, man, I wish I had a barn yeah. dough that I could work out of, man. <laughs> right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think we all do. I'm still trying to get a garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's priority. And then, you know, maybe a bedroom for the kids. I don't know. <laughs> you gotta have priorities yeah it's garage it's about, it's about the garage yeah right <laughs> kids know, can sleep 30, in a garage 30, but you can't <laughs> 30 by 50 foot shop you know four or five doors and then a bathroom and a, you know a couple of bedrooms yeah so it's a, the american uh, dream get one of those hangers you just a get hanger, a hanger a like hang. a hanger house or a barn dominium yeah you, know, you heard of those too yeah and apparently they don't have to be building code because they're barns. Because they're barns. I, th yeah. I, I think it's one of those things where it's they're, like they don't they're not, need. To they're be, not but, habitable. They're not uh, technically yeah, habitable. They're not yeah. technically habitable. But I think uh, you still have to have a habitable property or building nearby like, structure yeah. on the property. Just I don't know. Get don't, a small house. None just, of this is legal advice. Oh yeah. I no, don't know no. anything about. <laughs> yeah, what we I'm have a lawyer about. on the chat right now saying you're completely wrong. No, so I, I probably get a C van and turn that into. Is someone really calling me out? No, no, no. Okay, because I would take their word for it before I take mine. Comments. I am curious. Okay, so kick what, us with some comments. What do, what do we so, got? Right, so we got uh, Scott, of course, up in here. Um, hi, Sam's Scott. Garage says, hi, go Power Sports. Hi. Um, hi. Hey. How did the swap meet go at um, at Mini Mayhem? Because it's something new that we've done, or you've done. That's a touchy subject. We had a lot of people looking forward to it, and then uh, very minimal participation. Mm. Um, we tried to lay out some kind of structure to where everyone was on the same page. And uh, I think we had a handful of people actually uh, dive into that. Um, it's It was a hard concept because, you know, even the machine show, you know, we're stopping the entire event for this, this one thing. And to do that for a swap meet would be really difficult. Um, we encourage people to use the Facebook group. We have a buy sell uh, Mini Mayhem page. And, uh, you know, I had put out, you know, put a tag for sale at Mini Mayhem. Yeah. You know, so that people, when they want to go look for something, you know, use social media to your advantage. Um, I don't know how we can better handle that just yet. Uh, obviously, I'm, you know, I'll reach out to the community. I'm sure people have probably have already blown up my, my inbox um, about why it did or didn't happen the way it was supposed to. But uh, we tried. And it's a, it's a first. Yeah. That's a first for us. Um, I think the hardest thing is just grinding everything to a halt for, you know, for this one part when, you know, Facebook Marketplace is already readily available. I, I think, I mean, I like what JMBR does where, where they had like a little swap meet section towards the front. So as you walk in, if you make a right, 
-hmm. you can just go right up to it and you can check out what people are selling and stuff. But yeah, they're not going to stop the event so that everyone can like come back to the tents to figure out if they're going to sell some stuff. And a lot of people are still riding the machines they're selling. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, there's a, uh, I don't want to throw them under the bus because they never actually said this, but the venue, you know, the property owners, you know, if we're handling, you know, money exchanges on their property, you know, I feel like they should at least know about it, mm. work something out with them, see how they feel about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, because they put a lot into this, this venue. And, you know, I feel like opening up a marketplace within, you know, this ATV park, I, I, we might be stepping on toes. So we got to be careful with stuff like that too. They might be totally cool with it. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not something that we really had time to talk to them about just, you know, this time around. Uh, maybe we can in the future. Yeah. And honestly, maybe they have some ideas. They might have swap meet stuff that goes on. So they might they be able might. to tell you this is what other people have done. Yeah. So, but, you know, maybe yeah. lean on them a little bit. They are new owners. Uh, we're still building a rapport with them. We want to keep it positive. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's might be. Worth I think throwing a couple bucks out. their way out of, you know, you take a cut of whatever the sales are from the thing and. Could be something too, but I don't want to make monetary promises because I'm not the one with the money. That's true. So. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I know that they they are glad to have us. They you know they told us themselves you know we draw a big crowd, um, and I know that is a, a it's a mutual benefit for us and them to to work together. Yeah. So um, we'll be staying in close contact with them too. Um, yeah. They've been really supportive. Hmm. So. Nice man. Yeah. Nice. What else we got? Scott Brian? says Alex was my camp neighbor our first time in 2021. He made our first experience feel very welcome. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, sorry, is. sorry. Oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Foster said, yeah. "Wild man, Alex." Is that what they call you? Is that what they call me? I, that's what Wyatt calls you. <laughs> What's up, Wyatt? Yeah. <laughs> what does he call him? Wild man, Alex. Wild, wild man, man, Alex. What did I do that made me wild? Huh? Besides the other that thing. right there, right behind you. That's that's pretty. Oh wild. well, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> it's it's what you get used to having something for so long. You know, it's, yeah. It's, and back when we were talking about water sports, Scott said, "Don't get him on a hovercraft." What happened on the hovercraft? I don't know if we want to talk about the hovercraft anymore. Oh no. We have <laughs> oh, <laughs> nothing, nothing happened to the hovercraft. Nothing, nothing at all happened to the hovercraft. I'm assuming you went up and it went. <laughs> and just Not quite you. that dramatic. No, no, no. Um, so are you familiar with the hovercraft? The scat. I think it's a scat. Two, no. Um, or you just stand on the board and it kicks water down, and you're like the superhero from no. Spider Man. No, it's a it's a legit hovercraft. Like it's got a two stroke engine, big fan on the back. It's got the actual you know airbags underneath that lift this thing up. It you know oh, it'll okay. go over dirt. I'm thinking of something grass. else. Never mind. <laughs> are, you, are you going like uh, Green Goblin? Yeah, I was thinking or? Green Goblin. That's what yeah. I was thinking of. Well, today on Cars and Cameras. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's some hacksmith stuff right that's, there, man. I think he's done it probably maybe that sounds like something he would yeah. work on i uh, i'm a little guilty of not following that channel so much recently um maybe i'll get back into it um no 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 it's it's a legit it's a it's a hovercraft uh like almost like the a pwc equivalent of a hovercraft like it's like the like a bumper car looking kind of sort a little of. bigger it's is that like the, the one where i hit the ditch and he went forward into it that was me that was you okay that was, <laughs> that's that's what happened to the i do remember that yes there was a uh so a little bit of a ditch but the grass was tall so i didn't know this was there <laughs> not my property so i didn't i wasn't familiar with it ike knew you know, he knew they apparently they had a piece of, of wood laid out right there at one point and the wood had gotten moved. Mm. Um, right before. Yeah. yeah. Right <laughs> before. Yeah. Out. I'm going to I'm pointing fingers at everything yes. uh, except for me. Um, <laughs> responsibly, I probably should have walked my, you know, plotted course. I didn't. Uh, and that's, that's it'll be fine. That's, that's responsible. Me. Yeah. Um, uh, realistic me. Send it. Yeah. You know? um, we, we got permission to write it. So we did. Um, there was a stump in that ditch. Oh, that yeah. was actually the downfall. The ditch itself, it probably would have just slid over because the bottom of this hovercraft is it's 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 like a bolt hole. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh it's rounded yeah. off. It's fiberglass. Um, this stump or rock or whatever it was just stopped it dead. <laughs> um, and then I'm over the front. Heck yeah! Um, so you weren't you're not like strapped in. You're when not you're, riding you're not thing. strapped in. You have a kill switch that's tethered to you, uh, similar to like a jet ski. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you do, you know, come off it, it'll, it'll shut off. I didn't come all the way off. I did uh, what uh, they've been referring to as going full scorpion. Oh, so I was up. I was up chest on the the 
<laughs> the windscreen there, legs up in the air. Um, <laughs> and, and and it only hurt a little. Oh, good. Okay, good. <laughs> um, to this day. <laughs> and then, yeah, still. Um, no, actually, it, it, physical injuries, almost not. I had a little bit of a bruise, but that was it. Um, to be expected when you crash in a uh, hovercraft. Um, yeah. As you know, you know, you, everyone's done oh, it. Everyone's done it everyone's once, Everyone's done guys. it at least <laughs> once. Yeah. Um, you know, you remember, you know, learning to ride a hovercraft first time you got dad pushing you from behind. Don't let go, dad. You know? <laughs> um, and then you go down inevitably. Yeah. Uh, and you, you know, you go full square. And then your dad laughs at you and, and he laughs, films yeah. it. Yeah. yeah he, found out he let go like, you know, 20 feet ago. Um, no. He and, moved the plank over <laughs> the big hole that he went over. <laughs> that's, that's it. Um, no, actually, I, I, I genuinely I felt bad because they had just got this thing put back together oh. with the, the new engine and, and, and all that. Um, and then, uh, you know, I went and crashed it. Oh, man. So, and Ike wasn't even there for it. Damn. Um, but luckily, John filmed it. Good. Oh, good. So, well, as, yeah. long, as long as it's on here. That's the as first thing. Okay. Anytime somebody gets hurt here, the first question is, did you get it on did film? You know? yeah. <laughs> so, so at least it wasn't a waste. Right. Yeah. Well, you know? That's usually the second question. So actually, the first thing I said was, you know, are you okay? You know, it's just straight to, you know, am you I good. okay? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, he's, he's got such a kind heart. Like, that's first priority is, is the people. Um, but that was the first thing. I, I'm feeling bad. Like, he's going to be mad. Like, I'm like, you know, I, I, even, you know, John, like, don't call dad. Like, don't tell dad. Like, um, and then we called him. Uh, and we let him know. And the first thing he says, are you, you know, is he okay? Yeah. So I was like, yeah. So, and then we did some shop and found some new uh, uh, bags for it. They're all individual bags, like that white, that circle, this whole thing. John was able to source some. They needed to get done anyway, and this kind of pushed them to that point. And it ended up creating some pretty interesting content. Yeah. You know, um, accidentally, but it was there. It ended know? up working out. It worked out. And, and, you know, I'm never in front of the camera and... And then I was. Yeah, just the one, the one time. <laughs> the one time, yeah. And now I'm not allowed to ride anything over there ever again. <laughs> no. Gotcha. That's, that's or at not, least... That's not true. Not hovercraft. That's not Maybe not the hovercraft. In fact, I, uh, he hid it from me. So I was out there and I was like... Where is it? <laughs> I was like... Where is it? Where's Alex is coming thing? over. Oh. <laughs> 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 throws a tarp yeah, every, over Every it. time I show up, all their cool stuff is gone. <laughs> it's weird. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah the, the hovercraft was gone. I didn't get to ride the Odyssey for fear that I would flip it. John says I have one speed, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I push things probably a little harder than I should. Um, I had the joiner on their track uh, this last weekend. Uh, you know, it's a. I did a, a 55 second lap. Which is what's the fastest? For 52, 48. I don't know what the fastest. I just remember looking at their 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 leaderboard. It would have been like number five or six. Oh, nice! Heck yeah! Wow. wow. Yeah. That's super cool. It is super scary. Yeah. I, I was out of breath at the end of the lap, and this is driving a buggy. Like, yeah. I was terrified in that thing. Really? I was, yeah. Just because I'm very worst case scenario, and after flipping in a side-by-side, -side, yeah. it's just... Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry again. I've, <laughs> I've only almost flipped it once, and that was on tarmac. And then, then there was, was water everywhere line. when we were riding. Mm -hmm. I, like, we went over that hill, and I was like, oh, we're going to go in the water. But we didn't, so. Yeah, we never went in the water. Yeah. I don't remember where we went. We were everywhere. We did go everywhere. Except the water. Yeah. We did we some pretty tacos. tight. We did some pretty tight show. Yeah, we got the tacos. Yeah. Shouts out Taco Guy. Uh Tico, I think his name was. Rico. 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 Yeah, Rico's Tico's tacos. tacos. Rico's tacos. Oh, okay. mm. He's got a uh, Rico's Roccos. He's got a, a truck out there. Um Tico's Tacos is better. Tico does have a, yeah, but I feel bad for butchering his name. Oh, it's okay. Rico. Shout out to Rico. Yeah, Shout Tico. out to Rico. Yeah. Rico, come on yeah. out. Tico, you're all right. <laughs> we got him around the curtain. Yeah. Uh, no, good tacos, good tacos. Um, nice. That that guy has become a staple for the event too, because we do the beanie weenies, you know, one night, and I'm pretty sure everyone has gotten tacos there. If they haven't, they should, because mm -hmm. they are good. Yeah. Um, and if anyone's like me, they don't feel like making their own food. It's a good one. Rico's tacos. Okay. Nice. So. I'm looking forward to checking out. I'm I'm hoping I can come on the the spring trip to go out. You there. gotta come out. Yeah, I really want to check it out. One man. time. Yeah. I, I mean, Bernie, you've been out there twice now. Three, three times. Three yeah, times. I was there for Dirty Thirty this past spring, and then this last one. Is it just as exciting every time? Oh, every single time It's better and better. You get to meet more people. You hear more stories, and just like it's just, it's it's a great experience. I think every everybody should mm. do. At yeah. least everybody here. Should, yeah. Should do it. It's pretty fun. What other yeah. comments we got? 
We got Colin. Shouts out to Rattle Can Customs. What's up, uh, Colin? Oh, there we go. That's he said, Colin. we did the behind the scenes. CNC and KJ Racing did the full builds. So okay. for okay. the the carts that we were talking about. Okay, yeah, the cross carts. The VF1, mm -hmm. I think, is what they built. The model they built is a VF1. Um, John wants to know, I want to know how you guys got that mini bike in the studio. And I told him we got video of it coming up on the, the forklift. Are we... So. Uh, can it's, we post that video? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Essentially, it's Junior, right? It or was, did you guys? Yeah, Junior. Oh, I heard you guys say OSHA not approved or something. OSHA so. would not have approved. Okay. Yeah, at um, all. I thought, well, you're, you're lucky because we do not have an OSHA officer. This, uh, and we do this all the time. So. Yeah. This was, uh, this was my second time this week riding a forklift. So, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, on the wrong end of it. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, you were <laughs> literally riding yeah, literally on the riding forklift. Literally riding the forklift. Yeah. Um, and I think you can ride that sucker down the stairs. I've I ride probably others could have ridden it up the stairs if I tried enough. You should have. I've gone up some some rocks and stuff about that. Okay, stage. make sure we're rolling. Next time, I'll, I'll, I'll write it down. Yeah, make sure we're rolling. Oh my god, I don't have a front brake though. Okay. That might <laughs> be better. Does the door gotcha. line up with the stairs? Huh? Uh, it, it, you the door at the to, bottom does that line yeah, up? Yeah, for the most part, you may need to kick it a little right. Can we stand a mattress up in the corner? Well, uh, yeah, I guess. Maybe the, we, we can put the chair. couch there or something. We'll just have yeah. three people down there like this, just, <laughs> just ready to die. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, How do you find volunteers for that? Who's had a long and successful life? <laughs> <laughs> Meet me at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. We have plans. <laughs> Jack Ramsey says, what up, y'all? What's up, Jack? Jack? Shout oh, out, Jack. Jack. Hope you're feeling better. Yes, sir. I got you, man. New shots of his foot if anybody wants to, to see that. Yeah, it looks like a shark bit off his foot. Yeah. Or a bit part wow. of his foot. And then let go. Yeah. That um, sounds... Is it really that? It's pretty bad. Yeah. Did he... Uh, I'll text him afterwards. What's this? Andy says... Oh. Chris says, there's one for sale in Maryland. Been contemplating grabbing it before... Mini Mayhem Spring. I'm the guessing he's talking about the Joiner. The Joiner uh, or the MB200? Maybe Probably the Joiner because this is later in the, the conversation. Joiners are getting harder and harder to find. They only made that model for about three years. Oh, um, so you should get it. If you find one in like cherry condition, they're still going for eight to ten grand. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, mine I happened to get for a little under three grand. Uh, it was not in cherry condition. <laughs> it, need, it needed some work. Uh, bushings, shift linkages, uh, tires weren't holding there. The engine was barely running. Electrics were terrible. A um, little love and care. It took some love and care. It, it, nothing on it was hard or expensive. It was a lot of just, I think, lazy maintenance, mm. if there was maintenance. Um, you know, And I suspect it had been crashed at least once or twice. Oh, okay. You know, the, like I said, that tie rod broke Easily just doing alignment. Like, I've taken the jam nut off, and this thing just drops out of the rack. Um, the control arm, front control arm, which I think only one person noticed is actually bent up a little bit. Oh. It's, I think it's been crashed. Okay. Um, uh, one of the front wheels is bent. Um, it's it's definitely been crashed. Yeah. I, <laughs> we're, we're getting there. That's safe. It's a it's it's safe, safe assumption. I, I might just end up redesigning the entire front end to get some longer travel. It's got about 12 inches of suspension travel. I want more. Hmm. I want to go see this thing when we're when we're done. Oh yeah, that's cool, man. I got it parked outside. Yeah. Oh, dope. Okay. I yeah. had a so the way I have the trailer loaded, the bike goes in the front of the trailer, and the joiner sits, you know, towards middle back. So I had to take the buggy out to get the bike out. So it's it's okay. out there. You can drive it. Nice you drive. drive it. Okay. Okay. Uh, sure. Let's do it. Can you drive a stick? No. So I need to practice. So I will find I will find something else to practice on next time. I will drive. I will ride it. You could probably practice on that. It's very forgiving. Oh, I don't want to mess it up. I don't yeah, think you mess could. it up. I don't think you could. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, dump the clutch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, you know, with Rasheen says, help forward. me help New York mini bike culture. So we need to help out the Who mini says bike this? culture in New York. Rasheen. Rasheen. Yeah. Where, Where in New York? Like Rasheen. Down, downtown Times Square? Actually, that's uptown. Um, uptown Times Square. I don't, I've never been there. Can you? I, I saw it when, when I was up there uh, about Times two Square? months ago. I saw Times a couple of uh, So technically, the dividing line between downtown and uptown is either 14th Street or 42nd Street, depending on who you're talking to. I've never lived in a town big enough to have an up or down. Oh, gotcha. Everything, if, I, if I see a skyscraper, I'm downtown where I'm at. Yeah, it's just town. Oh, it's town. I'm going <laughs> town. 
I, I go town now. Well, let's say I had a, I had a, I, I went to high school in Brooklyn, and one of my teachers was like, I hate it when people say, "Oh, I'm going to the city," like instead when they mean Manhattan. And it's like, oh, uh, it's like, yeah, like the city is actually all five boroughs. It sounds minus like I Staten would, Island. Sounds like I would make some enemies. No, don't. Because it's all city to me. I'm, it's no, it's all. I mean, the thing is, is it's all city. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's a giant, it's a giant just, concrete garbage. Just can. get more vague. I'm going to buildings. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm to going. I'm going to buildings. I, I'm going to building. Uh, I take train to building. Upstate is tree. Yeah, I'm going to trees. Well, that's the thing is, like, I say upstate when I'm talking about anything that's across the Hudson River, mm -hmm. and I have friends who are from like Albany and up, and they're like, no, no, upstate is Buffalo, <laughs> like yeah. uh, on the border with Canada. I've I have been through. Uh, a lot of that area upstate and then some of the states. So I, I was a truck driver for a couple of years. Oh, okay. Um, I've, I've been to 46 states. Um, Dang. Wait, which I, four haven't you gone to? I have not been to Alaska. Okay. I haven't been to Washington. I haven't been to North Dakota and I haven't been to Montana. Okay. Wow. Ah, all the whack states. Now, to be <laughs> fair, I did not drive to Hawaii. I did fly to that one. I <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's why you need a hovercraft. Or oh, this thing go. needs to float. Hovercraft. Take that to Hawaii. That's a long <laughs> ride on something that does not float. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, that would be that's a lot of ocean to cover. You and Jack Ramsey can do it. World's longest. It's impossible. Water. You can't do it. That's <laughs> oh, dang. Challenge accepted. Right, we're going to start taking some notes. <laughs> Drive, Drive to, to Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. Check. Jason yeah. says... No. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. We got it. Uh, so, well, uh, I, I'm really interested to hear more about helping New York with their mini yeah, bike culture. So like, hopefully I'm, he can get back on and let us know what he meant by yeah, that. Yeah, no, hit us, like, send us an email or something, because I'm, I've been, I've been wanting to go out and do some stuff on New York mini bike culture, because uh, even when Bernie was out there, he and my brother were walking around, and they just saw someone was just tooling around on a Coleman, just, yeah. like, in, in the middle of Soho. It's like, yeah. I want to go check that out. So, I want to know more too. Let me know how that plays out. Got you, man. Right, and uh, if I can help. Jack says he's game to to float this to Hawaii. To float so. to Hawaii. Damn. We might, maybe if we had enough tires on it. Yeah, and a, <laughs> and a paddle. At least two more. And maybe a spare engine just Colin, in case. Colin said, "Heard you won't." So Dang. now you got to do it. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> on air, so yeah, yeah. you got to do it now. I, I okay. now, so what I'm picturing now is that you're going to do one of those like long sea voyage boats, but at the inside, inside of the shell is going to just be a mini bike attached to a propeller. <laughs> I'm thinking uh, you might see them at resorts as giant trikes. With oh, the tires yeah. Like this there tall, you go. Just big plastic yeah. wheels. There you you're go. You got the live axle back there. So Yeah, live axle. Uh, it might work. I might need to rebuild the forks. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, okay, so they were talking about the hovercraft for sale, I guess. Oh. oh. Not I caught one on sale, and uh, I was talked out of it. By Ike? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Jack said, we can die together. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> but now we either need two of them, or it needs to be a two-seater. Oh, right. there you go. And are we doing side by side, or is one of us hugging the other? Hugging the other, gotcha. hugging the other. I think how, <laughs> how close are we going to be at the end of this trip? Dumb and dumber, yeah. Very <laughs> dumb and dumb. Yeah, I actually I think that uh, according to according to the law in Hawaii, if you travel by mini bike there, you're technically married. Ah, hmm. uh, I remember Sorry. seeing that law. I haven't read that one. Oh yeah, no, no, it's it's. A, it, I'm gonna take your word for it because I don't think I'll find that. Yeah, one. Colin no, said Jack and Rose style. <laughs> I wish all of y'all were here right now so we could just hang out. And yeah. How Jack and how does how do we make that work? Are we talking like you yeah. guys on like a boat? I'm, drag I'm, a, flying, a I'm flying big table or? behind you. Yeah. And you guys will just lay on together. I'm thinking on the front of the boat with, you know, Rose arms yeah. out and Oh yeah. Oh, that Jack's, makes way more sense yeah, than that, like that. one of you sinks to the bottom <laughs> and the other one hangs <laughs> just, out on top of a just door. Show up one's dead. Right. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> That's the end of the video. Great it's, content. Though. We have a 50% yeah. success rate. Yeah. <laughs> and then, let me see. Rico's has been a staple for years over at... Uh, oh, it sure has. Yeah. Very, um, very lively character, too, behind the grill. Oh, nice. He's, he's a good guy. <sighs> Dang, now I'm my mouth is watering. I'm excited. Yeah, he does a good steak, tie like steak, cilantro, onion, like throws yeah. hot sauce on that thing. Do, um, How much time do we have? 
We are at one hour, 30 minutes. Holy moly. We've been doing this for a hot second. Yeah, um, yeah. We usually keep it at an hour. Plus. I know. So, okay. If most, if people are still tuning in, um, I just want to take a quick second. Please go and vote if you haven't voted already. Early voting is going on in most places here in Texas. It's going on for a few more days. I was expecting you to do this. At the top of the hour? Yeah. yeah no. And please just go November 5th. Go vote. If you have not voted, election day is November 5th. Have your ID ready. Follow all applicable laws uh, for your state and locality, but make sure you vote because um, we need people to vote because right now America's voter turnout is like 10%, which is ridiculous. So please go out and do it. People are saying write in Alex for president. Alex, yeah. Or Harambe. I have One of the no two. policies right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I was going to say, I, like, I like Ike. I, I like Ike. Ike like, Ike let's do that. We could bring those I pins like back. I like that slogan. Yeah. yeah. Like well, that's um, I like, Eisenhower. I like Ike. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was Eisenhower's okay. slogan. Plagiarism. <laughs> We're opening up with plagiarism. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've got the same policies as a Jell O mold, so. Um, <laughs> Firm. Yeah. Yet right. subtle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, people are just going back and forth in the comments. It's funny. Now so, they're getting into uh, political like, battles. Quick. <laughs> okay so never i'm sorry yeah i just i just how wanted long, to I want, I want to know from the comments how long do you think it would take to get to hawaii on a on a mini bike if we made one float if we um, what's a, a reasonable a Siri question what's what a reasonable journey on a floating trike because you're talking about like yeah what is the, the do distance? i need to pack a lunch hmm. i'm sure i mean john was walking around with his bag of jerky and nuts i'm sure that's all you'd need on this trip. I'll do like we do when we go down the river. Yeah. Inner tube, just cooler in a tube. Have a float behind us. Right. Um, okay, so the shortest distance between California and Hawaii is 2,472-ish miles. So whatever that is divided by 50, 50 miles a day. I did about 60% of that by truck and it still took me way too long. Yeah, so I'm going to say time. approximately a month. It would take you guys a month on the ocean to get there. At what speed? And then you need all that gas to, oh. to do it, unless you threw a sail on there, too. Mm. I... A wind-powered <laughs> Zane, like, Zane's bike. like, I uh, want to see this. Now thing. I'm kind of like... Wind-powered amphibious mini bike. I'm I'm kind of digging this. I kind of want to see this now. I kind of want to see if we could like do a sail powered mini bike in general. Or Jack said he he could do it in eighteen to twenty hours. <laughs> <laughs> How fast are you going, Jack? Eighteen to twenty hours. Jack does move at the speed of sound. Yeah. So, peak kind of I kind of want to see a sail powered. Uh, I'm powered I'm mini bike. kind of excited about about doing something with this. I because I know you know they show that thing where it's like how fast you would need to go for a like a wind turbine powered engine for it mm -hmm. to be able to not lose all momentum. I kind of want to see if we could do that on the water, but you basically have a wind turbine and a sail so you can get a little bit of extra push, but then you have a thing that's actually moving the gears. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You'd have to have something extra because you can't make or you can't spend more energy than you make. No, you can't. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying is if you have the yeah. sail, you'll but get some forward for momentum. Something, something. Somebody said there needs to be a floating mini bike at the next bus go. So nice. With all the water that's there, and the thing is that 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 huge lake that was in the center, that's always there. It's not that big, right. but there's always water there. Yeah. Um, something amphibious would be pretty cool. We kicked the idea of the hovercraft around, taking it out there. The problem is not a whole lot of riding would get that. It would be a showpiece, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then the space, you know, it takes a lot of space on a trailer. Oh yeah. Um, but maybe one day, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can talk them into it. Do a budget model that's just a, a like a two twelve on a like a flo uh, you know a floaty or something. Two twelve on a float. What about like a uh, a leaf blower? I, like, remember, I remember back elementary school using a a shot vac to float a board. To have, like, a yeah, board. yeah, you know yeah. What I'm talking about like yep. kind of like the you know how they do those the 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 wine cooler regattas, mm -hmm. something like that. Could be done. Let's say uh, yeah, we'll talk about it more. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh. All right, so I'm going to cut us there. Thank you a ton for driving all the way out here, for only getting a couple hours of sleep and just chatting with us for, for a little bit, so we appreciate you. Hopefully you have a safe trip all the way back down to San Antonio. Hopefully those wheel bearings uh, stay going for you. <laughs> the wheel bearings, and the anxiety's back, thanks. Yeah, so no. thank you. Uh, I want to invite everyone out on Saturday, actually Friday, November 8th, 
for the scavenger hunt at the GPS Ranch out in Graver, Texas. We have our big race, the GPS 180, on Saturday. Junior start at 10 a.m. The main event starts at noon. We'll have food out there. We have camping. Um, we're going to have a good time. We might have some bonfires if, if weather permits it. But come on out. Uh, if not, um, we'll definitely be, I guess, April 12th is our next event after that. But either way, you everyone, we hope to see you guys next weekend. We have new GPS 180 shirts that we'll be pushing out. So if anyone needs a shirt, we'll be selling them at the event. Oh, did we want to present? Oh, yeah. We have new merch coming out. That's a big reach, but he got it. We want to gift you with some of our new merch. It's a mini bike and ain't easy uh, stickers, and we have a mini bike and ain't easy T-shirt oh, that, that we wanted to gift you. It's so yeah. crisp. I like that. It says "Go Power Sports." It's a it's a frocket, a front pocket T-shirt, and with huge mini bike and ain't easy. Uh, so That's you let nice. everyone in the world know that, hey, mini biking ain't easy, especially when you're trying to build your own mini bike. Thank you so much. To go to Hawaii. <laughs> Thanks right. for coming out, man, and yeah. for, for chopping it up for probably longer than you expected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, appreciate you a ton. Uh, I appreciate the invite. No, this is fun. Yeah. Thanks for uh, having me. So all you guys out there, be sure to like, subscribe. If you have any comments, we'll put this up on YouTube. You can definitely leave some comments. Alex will we'll, we'll forward any comments to him if you have any questions for him. Be sure to follow the Facebook group, uh, uh, mini, mini, Mayhem. mini Mayhem. Are there two? Was there two words? Mini Mayhem. Was there another one for buy, sell, trade, or is that there the, is? That's... I've got it linked on the same one, but it's it's Mini Mayhem, buy, sell, trade. Okay. Like buy slash sell slash trade. Be sure because I know that group is just growing. So be sure to to follow Mini Mayhem on Facebook groups, yeah. and uh, you guys be sure to ride safe and as always ride on.